Hello and welcome to CTV's 2012 High School Football Preview, where we'll be taking you around the entire STCAL and breaking down every team's offense and defense. So kick up the shoes, relax, it's time for some high school football. Welcome in, I'm your host Tony Nunez, and today we'll be breaking down the two hometown heroes, the Harbor High Pirates and the Santa Cruz Cardinals. But first, we'll take a look at the results from a hard week zero. Santa Cruz High traveled to Menlo Atherton and they got absolutely pounded. 66 to 14 was the final score. Two early turnovers set back the Santa Cruz Cardinals and just not enough firepower on offense. They go down big, 66 to 14. Aptos High traveled all the way to Almeida to play Insigno, and in the final two minutes they had their hearts broken as Insigno scored the final touchdown with a minute and 55 seconds remaining. They would miss the two point conversion, but Insigno would hold out and win 12 to 11. St. Francis hosted Greenfield at Carl Conley Stadium at Cabrillo College, and they were absolutely shredded on the ground by Alfredo Diaz a 5'4", 150-pound running back. He took it to him with over 170 yards and two touchdowns. The good news for the Sharks is Siandro started the game and looks to have won the quarterback battle over Clifton as he went 18 for 29 and 284 yards, setting the single game record for St. Francis. SLV traveled to Alvarez and Salinas and they pounded the Eagles on the ground racking up 290 rushing yards. This one was not close, 30 to 13 in the end. Scotts Valley hosted Evergreen from San Jose and Ari Worgan carried the Falcons with 196 yards and a touchdown on 25 carries. They would pull it out and hold on 31 to 21. Soquel traveled to King City and the Knights had their way with the Mustangs. At half, it was 30 to zero. Call in the second stringers, the final score was 62 to 21. And finally, Harbor High hosted Pajaro Valley and Garrett Fonseca ran all over the Grizzlies, 148 yards on the, game, on the day behind an experienced offensive line. The final score was 27 to 12. Stay tuned, when we come back, we'll break down Harbor on the offense side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. And we have player and coaches interview. So come on back. Well, it was a shaky start for Coach Cox early on, but now with quarterback Milo Small, it looks like he finally has someone to lead his spread offense. But the real story behind Harbor High this year is their ground game, led by five returning starting offensive linemen and number 44, Garrett Fonseca, the 6'1", 190-pound bruising back, lines up in the backfield at running back and also takes a direct snap in the Wildcat formation. Earlier this week, we cut up with him for an interview. All right, so I'm here with number 44, Garrett Fonseca. How are you, Garrett? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing just fine. So the first question I want to ask you is, why the number 44? I know a lot of running backs and other skilled players, they'd like to choose the 21, the 24. Why 44? Uh, it's been in my uh, family for generations, and I just wanted to continue that. They all played here at Harbor High? or uh, No, my dad played at uh, Pally High, and my grandpa played over in El Paso. Oh, right on, right on. So we know that you're the feature back of this of this offense, so how are you handling that, you know, carrying the load? You know, instead of last year where you weren't getting as many carries, I mean, this last game you got 25 carries, you know, in total. So how are you handling that load? Uh, I'm taking it little by little. Um, it's still, it's new to me uh, on this varsity level, um, but I'm going little by little, so I'll get used to it. All right. And, um, I mean, it has to be really, really nice to have that offensive line with all five guys back. I mean, how big of an impact is that on you? You know, not only on them, on the entire offense, but just on you. That's huge because recently we, and the past few years we haven't had the best line. Uh, but now that we have all five seniors, uh, it's definitely a lot of weight off our shoulders. And their names are? Uh, Jasper Andrew, left tackle. Uh, Angel, no, no. Dakota Francis, left tackle. Jasper Andrew, left guard. Vincent Rodriguez, center. Chad Oakland-Jolin, right guard, and Joe Walensky, left, right tackle. 
Give some love out to the linemen out there. So, you know, when I played with Coach Cox, when he was my offensive coordinator over there at Watsonville High, he did a lot of the little things that, you know, that he instilled into the offense and not just that would help us out in football, but just even past football and outside of football. What, what kind of little things like that has he taught you guys, you know, throughout this entire year here? Uh, he's taught us everything that we that we need. Uh, fundamentals. Um, he calls the right plays at the right time, which is perfect. It's just what we need. Um, and how to do things right, because sometimes we have we have trouble doing things one time. Um, but he has the patience for us uh, to make us do as many times as we need to get it right. And how big is it? I know he's a spread offense kind of guy, but how big is it? You know, of a challenge to go from the spread offense to you know stand, getting it tight and in those tight formations and I mean I know you like it but how is it affecting the rest of the guys on there? Um, it was actually unexpected but uh, we absolutely love it. Uh, it's a lot easier because um, open field blocking is a lot harder than uh, like in the middle yeah. uh, so that takes a lot of weight off our shoulders. All right so Around at CTV, you know, we're a family. We like to get to know our players a lot better. So how about a couple of personal questions? You up for that? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, so who is your favorite NFL player? Could it be in the past or? Any any time, all time. Um, probably whew. Ernie Davis. Ernie Davis, good choice. That's a good choice, man. All right, um, favorite artist, favorite band? Ooh. I don't know. Oh, um, Jason Aldean. No, oh. <laughs> Jason Aldean, yeah. country guy, huh? Okay, I, I, I didn't expect that, but... And your favorite food, Garrett? Uh, pro bacon cheeseburger. Bacon cheeseburger. Good old American boy. All right. Hopes are high for the Pirates this year as they'll look to beat their record of 2-8 and eight from last season and make the playoffs. Well, last time we saw the Pirates on defense was at the Jamboree where they looked a little shaky in the open field tackling and in their back four. They were giving up some big plays against St. Francis through the air, but Coach Cox says that a little practice will make that perfect. Up front is where they look to be very stout. Their front seven, led by Garrett Fonseca, the two-way player, looks to be good this year. The only concern is with so many two-way players because they only have 27 kids on the roster, is fatigue. Earlier this week we caught up with Coach Cox and asked him about how he plans to fix the problems on his defense. Well you've been the Harbor High coach for now two years right or this your third year? Third year. This is your third year and how, how's it been you know has it been hard or how's it been to change the real like just the mentality of the players around here you know they haven't been used to winning and now it looks like they really want to win they expect to win when they go out there. Um, yeah it, it's been hard but we've had a lot of you know enthusiastic classes come through that have really helped it and these lower classes are kind of buying into it and so that's that's really nice and you know I I'm glad they instilled a little work ethic and now they're living through it. Well I know about the offense you know Garrett racking up over 100 yards last game and everything like that and he's been looking good but what about the defense how's, how's the defense been looking you know, throughout the first couple of weeks? Um, we like it. I, I think the guys get real excited to play defense. They swarm to the ball really fast. Um, we, we work on that. Um, and, you know, we, we consider ourselves a tough defense. We, we consider ourselves a defensive ball club, and last game's kind of proof of it. We were tough downhill runners, and then we, were play, we played pretty solid defense. You know, we let a couple things go at the end, but, you know, for the most part, the most of the game, we were pretty good. So we're happy. Well, at the Jamboree, I remember seeing you guys get a little, you guys got a little gas at, you know, towards the end of it. And, um, you know, St. Francis was throwing the ball around on you guys. I know, you know, you're not going to face many offenses like that that like to throw a ball around, maybe just them and SLV. But, uh, you know, how do you go against that for St. Francis? How do you correct that? Yeah, for getting gassed, um, you know, what we've done is, you know, we put in a couple sub packages. And so we're pretty, pretty efficient about it on the sideline. As far as going to against passing teams, um, we like to give them different looks in the secondary, and then uh, we bring a little pressure, you know. So we didn't have that in for the Jamboree because that was our base stuff, and we're we're adding as we go. We're gonna we're gonna attack a passing team different than we're gonna attack a running team. That's just that's how we do it. So, okay, thank you, Coach. Yeah. 
Well, if Fonseca could stay healthy for the Harbor High Pirates, it looks like they'll have a pretty good season this year. But stay tuned. When we come back, we'll break down the Santa Cruz Cardinals offense and defense. Come on back. Well, last year, Santa Cruz High was carried by a strong senior backfield led by Jonah Hodges. But this season, they only have five seniors on the squad. And against Menlo Atherton, they struggled to get their offense going, as well as at the Jamboree, where they were shut out from the end zone. On the defensive side of the ball, it's more the same for the Cardinals as they look inexperienced at the Jamboree and against Menlo Atherton, giving up 66 points against anybody, even though it is Menlo and they are a strong team, is not a good sign for the Cardinals. So don't go anywhere, we have the CTV Power Rankings 1-7 through seven coming right up. Welcome back, it's time for the best part of the show, the CTV SCCAL Power Rankings. At number 7, I have the Santa Cruz Cardinals and their inexperienced team with 27 juniors on the roster. I just think that there's too much inexperience on both sides of the football for them to make a push into the playoffs. I think next year could be their year, but just not this year. There's just too much inexperience on this team. At number six, we have St. Francis. They look very good at the Jamboree, letting the ball air out against the other teams. But with their loss to Greenfield, it dropped them down. My rankings from number four to number six. I just don't think that they should have lost to Greenfield and by that much points. Although they do now have a starting quarterback, I can't see them beating Aptos or even competing with the likes of Soquel and Scotts Valley. At number five, we have the Harbor High Pirates and their very effective ground game. With the five returning starting offensive linemen, they look to have a pretty good season, but their defensive side of the football and their inability to have people rotating in and out because they only have 27 kids on their roster drops them down to number five instead of the top three or four. Well, number three and number four were very hard for me to decide. It was either SLV or Aptos, SLV or Aptos, and I just kept on arguing for one side or the other. But I'm just gonna give them 3A and 3B, but we'll put them down as three and four. I think Aptos at number four and SLV at number three. And why I have them that way is because SLV can pound you in the, game, in the run game, but they also have a very good defense. And Aptos High has too many two-way players and they are little inexperienced that's why I put SLV just above Aptos High this year. And number two, we have the Scotts Valley Falcons. The running game led by running back number 25, Ari Worgan, who racked up 196 yards and a touchdown this last game, looks to be very strong this year. The only gripes that I have with them is on the defensive side of the football in their back four. They looked a little soft and they looked a little not, they just didn't look very athletic at the Jamboree when they went up against the likes of Aptos and of course, Scott, or of course, Soquel, excuse me. Number one, we have the runaway team, the Soquel Knights. They looked very good against King City. As I said, it was 34 to zero at halftime and they threw in the second stringers and they still put up another 32 points on the Mustangs. They look like they can make a run all the way through the SECAL and maybe even go undefeated while heading into playoffs. Well, thank you for joining us. Next time, we'll break down the Valley teams, Scotts Valley and San Lorenzo Valley. For everyone here at CTV, have a good day. Until next time.